1989, alleged government physicist Bob Lazar tells the world he's been reverse engineering extraterrestrial flying saucers at Area 51. Lazar also claims the flying saucers he worked on are powered by a strange alien energy source called Element 115. But the secrecy surrounding the base keeps anyone from verifying these claims. Stories of elite security forces keeping the curious away begin to surface. And Pat is about to see just how intimidating these defenses really are. I'm about to meet with author Susan Wright, who wrote a book about Area 51. Now, she had a very scary experience just outside the perimeter of Area 51. Pat and Susan are driving 125 miles north from Las Vegas. They're now at the intersection of Highway 375 and a dirt road that leads directly into the base at Groom Lake. So what road are we on? This is the Groom Lake Road, and this actually goes to the front entrance of Area 51. The last time Susan was at the perimeter was in 1997. It was an experience she won't soon forget. The military really controls this area, and they try to be very intimidating to scare people away. So what did you experience? Well, when we went down this road, we went all the way to the border of Area 51, and we saw the camo dudes. Camo dudes is the nickname given to Area 51 roving security guards who wear camouflaged uniforms. They were blocking the uh, road so we couldn't get in any further. And we pulled back to the next series of buttes. We got out of the car and uh, a helicopter just rose out of nowhere. It was like no sound, no warning. So suddenly the helicopter was boom right there in front of us. Like how close? Like 40 feet away. We actually had to jump into the car to protect ourselves. It's very frightening, it's very intimidating, and obviously that's what they meant to do. They wanted to scare us away from the area. Why would a military base be engaging in scare tactics towards curious civilians? The answer could lie in what they're testing. The activities inside Area 51 may be out of view, but at the perimeter, the operation is all too public. Pat and Susan are now at the northeast corner of the restricted area. When they notice, they are not alone. There you go, right there. What, what, Camo what? dudes on that hill. Is that them? It's definitely them. What are they doing? They're watching us. Two guys in there. You want to see? You see, see there are two guys actually in yes. the vehicle? Did their lights just turn on? Yes, it did. I was wondering if there was anyone in the car. Right. And they sort of turn on their lights to respond to that. In the distance, surveillance units are monitoring both video and audio in the area. And see, you can see the sensors right there, right there, keeping an eye on us. Despite being tracked, Pat and Susan continue on to the perimeter. You can see there's a new sign they've put over the old one. The old signs had, violators will be shot, which really? was a little intense. Wow. And so now they've got these signs. Well, what's this one say? Warning, U.S. Air Force installation. It is unlawful to enter this area without permission of the installation commander. All personnel and the property under their control are subject to search. Wow. As Pat and Susan begin walking along the orange posts outlining the border, security always maintains a constant line of sight. Well, they reposition themselves so they can see better exactly what we're doing. They want to see where we're going to go and what exactly we're going to do. They're watching us right now. Yeah, they probably have binoculars trained on us right now. I'd like to get out of here. Okay. Can we go? We can go. 